I'm here with North Carolina Tar Heels shot putter slash disc discus thrower Daniel MacArthur, four-time All-American, three t- three-time ACC champion, ten-time All-ACC, North Carolina record holder, a god for throwing basically in track, and um. So, born in North Carolina, went to North Carolina University. What was that like? Because especially your father um, played football for them. So, or for North Carolina State, he played for it. And then he went to the biggest rival. What was that like in the family? Oh, so, like, for me, that that transition from – dad being an NC State guy, growing up an NC State fan, and then coming to UNC, that transition was a real long story, right? I was a football guy, was recruited there for football, um, was told my offers got pulled, I got hurt my bat, and they weren't interested anymore, and that's fine. Like, that, that's, that's how things go. And then I started doing track, and I really, like, got dedicated track, and I was talking to the throws coach, and they're like, hey, man, you have a full scholarship. You have a full scholarship. I'm like, all right, sweet, like, he was like, the head coach is about to call you. Let me call you. Call me right after he calls you. I want, I want to know what he says. So head coach calls me. He's like, hey, Daniel, I don't really, like, feel like you're that interested and that devoted to our team. We're not going to offer you anything. Like, All right. Hey, like, that's a – I respect your opinion. Sorry you feel that way. I was an NC State guy growing up all my life. I'm sorry you feel that way. Right? That's fine. Um, In that moment, I knew that, like, NC State wasn't going to work out for me. I was also in conversations with the UNC throws, uh, UNC throws coach, who was also the head coach here at Harless Matters at the time. And that dude really, he, he bought into me. He believed in me more than I think I was believed in in any other coach, right? So, one, I had, I had a coach here that really believed in me. I had the school, the, my dream school rivals, who I'm, I'm not – not my dream school anymore, but, like, I'm, I'm like, all right, cool. Let's go to the rivals. Let's go to UNC. And it just kind of seemed like everything fell in place for me with UNC, right? It was it was kind of that story storybook ending where it's like, hey, the way you thought it was going to work out isn't how it's going to work out, buddy. And it's going to be ten times better than what you thought it could have been. And so for me, like, UNC, I know for a fact, has been a much better place for me and has helped me very very much develop and like from talking with my dad especially during my recruiting process I remember we took the we took the UNC visit and we're at the track he goes Daniel I gotta do one thing before you come here I'm like all right what you need to do he sang the NC State fight song he said all right (laughs) now go be a Tar Heel for your life (laughs) I said all right so I shook his hand. And said, I, then I told him, I said, hey, it's going to be really nice never losing to NC State. And I've never – me personally, I don't think I've ever lost to an NC State thrower, well, which is which has also been been my, my own little – my own little self-victory. There you go. Like, <laughs> I just – get a, I just had the picture of, like, like the image of you and your father just on the, the track and your father just starts singing it. That's <laughs> just yep. you looking at him like, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um so what um made you like gravitate in high school to shot put oh so like like i said right i was a big football guy yeah. I was a big team sports guy and for me like i found myself i played lacrosse my my when i was in seventh eighth and ninth grade um, I was football, wrestling, lacrosse, and I played basketball growing up, baseball growing up. Like I, I did, I did every sport you can. When especially like when you're a young kid, that's what you do, right? Like you're yeah. always, you stay busy. So, growing up, I was always busy. Every season, I had something to do. Well, I knew like I didn't want to play lacrosse anymore, and it's my sophomore year. So I was like, hey, like what, what do I do now? So I see all my friends. They're like, oh, we're going out to like track practice. I'm like, okay, like I could do track. And then, like, I get out to track, and I'm like, all right, I'm going to do I'm gonna do some sprint workouts. Well, the first day that, like, we're out of practice, they had us, like, they had us run, like, 
three mile, three or four miles. I'm like, man, I'm not running ever again in my life. Like, we spent, we spent from, I want to say three o'clock to five o'clock just running laps, right? That's, and it was their way of getting people to quit and be like, all right, hell week, right? Like, okay, maybe I want to go be a jump. Maybe I want to do something other than run. So I'm like, all right, I'm a big guy. I can obviously, I feel like I can pick up a shot put. I can throw it farther than what the other big guys at the time were doing, just off of pure pride. Nothing yeah. else, no other background. I'm bigger than them and I'm stronger than them, so I'm going to throw it farther. And that wasn't, that really isn't, wasn't the case. There was a guy smaller than me, weaker than me, who threw it farther than me in that time. Like, we also were out there and it was just, it was a really, really good environment and a really nice social way for me to, like, meet other people outside of groups, um, me to, like, find those groups outside of just, like, your, you know, like, when you're in high school, your regular classes, your, your teammates from other teams. But now, like, you had the people from the very, very honors classes and, like, who were taking, like, Ivy, like, who were taking the, the I, I forget what they're called, but, like, the, the really elite classes AP? to, like, the AP classes, yeah. And then people, like, who are in shop classes. It, mer it merged everybody. And that, that's what I, I really thought was cool, especially, like, it was my first time of being on a team that, like, I, I like wrestling, all guys team, football, all guys team, lacrosse was all guys team, baseball, all guys team, basketball, all guys team, too. We're not, like, I'm – there's girls on the team. Like, there's there's really really smart people who who kind of come out and run versus like they're not going. Those same smart people weren't putting on a helmet and hitting their heads every day, you know. Yeah. So, to me, like that's kind of what really drew me into track and what kind of drew me to shot because I was a bigger guy and off of pride, I believed that just just off of pure pride, I could throw it farther than somebody else. I mean, that's how it starts. Like. Like I did track and like you said, like I met someone that I'm like I was very I'm very close with and played baseball my whole life, always guys, played basketball my whole life, always guys. Went to track soft like my after my freshman year, met my friend Athena. She's one of the best in Massachusetts right now for running and long jump. Never thought like, I remember I like, She's like one of the only ones that can keep up with me. I ran, and I remember being like, "I've never had no one ever keep up with me, like boys or girls." And like she was keeping up with me one day, and I was just like, "Yeah, it can't happen." So I blew past her, but I was just so like, "That's the amazing part about track. Like, it doesn't matter. You are gonna be become friends with, and it's a family. Like me and you were talking Absolutely. about earlier, like that family. So like North Carolina, how is that family like?" Was I know like there's family for track everywhere, but like how is that North Carolina? Dude, I can hands down say my kids will call my call my old teammates and recent teammates now uncle and aunt, right? Like from Brianna Duncan, who transferred our junior year, who went to Oregon and ran at Oregon, from Kenny Selman, who who is an Olympian, to just uh, other people who are across who are across the board are just I, I met who are hands down people from Brandon Cachone, who was a multiple all time All American to Market Craw, Liam Dixon. Just I, I can list literally probably a hundred names of people that like I'm like I'm very, very close with. It's those relationships that like we don't have to talk every day. I know I always got your back. You know, like, you always got mine. And it's really that family. I think for a time, like, no program's ever perfect, but ours is pretty close. And ours is growing every day. We got new um, new coaches kind of came out here three in 2019, 2020. And they instilled these really, really small team rules that in the time seemed like a really big inconvenience. They said before practice and after practice, you go to a locker room. You got to go to a locker room. And for, like, when you're a track guy, like, you go to the track, right? Like, you don't, you don't always have to go to a locker room because, like, you can keep your shoes in your bag, go grab yeah. a shot out of the shed, and you're good, right? Like, they're like, you have to go to the locker room. You have to, right? And so our team, our team culture, our family culture, 
I, I felt very connected to everybody I've always been on a team with. I, we were a big team. I went out of my way to have deep conversations with, and to have conversations, learn everyone's name and to know everybody because like we are a team, we are a family, right? Like, and so for us at Carolina, we talk about, oh, Carolina family. It's really, really big in the team. It's also really, really big in our community. So I think that helps and that helps like the, the Carolina family, Carolina track family is incredible. And that's what it's all about. Like, especially with the like deep conversations you said, like get to know everybody. Like that's something that honestly a team leader does. Yes, track is in a way individual sport. No. But to go out there and go out of your way to get to know people, that means a lot more to people than people really know. And especially nowadays. You don't have a lot of people like that, that that go up to people and be like, what's your name? And get to know them and actually want to know them. Like, you don't get to see, you don't really hear about that in fo- fo- football, basketball. You never really hear about that. But I've, no. but in track, you have people like that, like, they like, that do that, that it's a family. Like, everyone knows each other. That's the part I love about track okay. is no matter what, they're always going to have your back. And I feel like, that's something that should be talked about more like in like in sports that if you're on a team you're it's a brother you may hate the person outside that field. like once you get out of the locker room you may hate him but when you step on the field and you go in the locker room that's your brother or your sister Absolutely. like it's amazing like just think that sports have so much of impact and i feel like track is an amazing sport a lot of people don't understand half the stuff that's going on when it's on the TV, when it's on TV. It's usually when the Olympics happen, people are just like, you're saying Bolt's not running? Why is this on TV? Was this like, because you get to see these fast people run and then see this person throw this spear far as hell. Don't know what's going on, but he's throwing it. Have you ever tried javelin? I have not, no. Um, it's not for it's not for the it's not for the biggest biggest people out there, right? Like javelins for your for the people who have really really good shoulder mobility, and I do not. Have you ever wanted to though? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well, like you should have, like this is your last year at U of North Carolina. Why don't you just no. like tell the coach be like, hey, can I try it? <laughs> like to see if you could do it. So we talked about it, right? And every every time I get the same answer, he goes, you touch a javelin the day you want your career to be completely over. Why does he say that? What about, like, what is he, why does he say that? So you know how pitchers have the Tommy John surgery with right here? Yes. Every javelin thrower pretty much has that same surgery. Oh, Tommy John? Uh, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, I wonder why, though. Um... This ligament can only hold, I want to say, three pounds of tension overall. Three pounds of tension. And when you when you have the spear or the javelin just so caught back and you're putting so much in, and that's the first point of contact, like, to then take your arm yeah. forward, it's the first thing to go. Wow. I did. That's something I just learned. And now yep. everyone that watched this, that's going to watch this knows that too. Now that's actually really cool and kind of disturbing though, that like the going by the track, there's so much thing that connect like track with other sports. Like like you said, you did track to stay in shape for football. Yeah. I did track to stay in shape for baseball or to get in shape because I did indoor. So again, shape for baseball. It like, well, I think, I, I think one thing that like we forget is the basics of sports in itself, right? Like every, not every sport, but the majority of sports have a component behind them. And all those components come back to track and field. I still think it's really funny and interesting that like America is the only only people that call it track and field. Every other country calls it athletics. Really? It's the basic, yeah. It's the, um, if you look at it, it's the World Athletic Championships when it's the World Track and Field Championships. Oh. It's the track and field is the basics of athletics. You got to run, you got to jump, and you got to throw. When you play football, you run and you throw, right? Like, yeah. you hit, but you run and you throw. 
baseball, you run and you throw. You yeah. hit like you know, like basketball, you run and you and you jump. Yeah. You shoot. Like it track and field athletics is the basics to kind of everything. And that's yeah. why I think like there's so many correlations between track and field and literally every other sport. Yeah, I, agree. I now I actually think about it. I but I didn't really I didn't know that athletics, that's what they were called yeah. around the world. I did not know that. Yeah. Um what am I like talking about around the world? Have you where have like where has um being a four time All American, ten time all ACC and three time ACC champion brought you in the world? Because track and field events or athletic events, because it's outside the country, brought you. Where has it brought you? Yeah, so like actually what's funny is you can see my um, Yeah, that's what I was asking you about. Yeah, so I was asked to be on the World University Games um in 2019, which took me um to Naples, Italy. Ooh. Right? We we were out in Naples, Italy for two weeks. And for me, like that's been my that's been my farthest trip. I got to really explore all of like the US. Um, all the way from North Carolina to New York to to Florida, all down the East Coast, all the way going out to Oregon and everything um, to Eugene for the Olympic trials and NCAA championships. So, like, for me, I've been very blessed. I was asked to participate on the World University Games again this year, which is in China. And then I'm looking to make the... I'm looking to make the uh, a U another USA team this year, which is they're going to go down the list between um, world championships, which actually is going to be in Oregon this year, which will be really cool because that will be like home, a, home, a home field, right? Yeah. And then you have the – you have NACAX, which is, I want to say, in Brazil. So that would be cool if I get to make that team. That's a – a lot of traveling, <laughs> like, a lot of um, have you, are you, like, now that like, you have made it this far in shot put, are you still thinking, like, now, like, Olympics, is that, like, your biggest goal now, would you, that you would say, or a world championship, or both? Oh, absolutely, um, both of them are definitely in, like, in my realm of, like, what I want to do athletically, um, I I'm kind of nursing a back injury right now, so I'm kind of trying to get that situated. But with my 70 foot um, throw that put me at number seven all time in the NCAA, and for this year it put me number th right now I'm ranked number three. And at that moment I was number two in the U.S. Which so they take the top two out of the for there's a world champ indoor championship this year where they took the top two U.S. guys. Um, I was in college, so I didn't go to that indoor meet. And Tunde and Ryan Krauser did fantastic. And don't think I would have made that meet, if, even if I went to the USH Championships. But I would I think I could have argue been, arguably been third had I hit that same throw, right? Yeah. Which, which, which would put me in kind of the more elite territory now with that 70-foot throw. So absolutely, the the Olympics and World Championships and making any team USA team I can make is definitely on the on the goal. There, and this just takes that one throw to do it too. Absolutely. That one like single throw, just to make sure you get up to that thing. And that's the amazing thing about track: one good throw, one good jump, run good, one good run. That's a hard. That's a tongue twister. One and run. Saying that like it's a hard one, but. Just one of those things. Like, do a one good run. You could be Usain Bolt, but Usain Bolt did it multiple times. Obviously, it's Usain Bolt. Oh, he, yeah, he, he's fantastic. He's a, he's awesome too. I love I love like hearing the stories about Usain Bolt. Like like he would eat McDonald's before every oh, him, like his McNuggets. Yeah, like I I found that so amazing. I'm like the world's fastest man ever ate McNuggets before. A game or before a run. Sports, sports nutritionists hate him. Oh yeah, it's like literally. I'm like over here, just like. So you're telling me, he's the fastest one on the earth, like. Yep. yep. And he eats McNuggets daily when he goes to the Olympics, and he's still breaking these records. 
they lied to me in health class. I'm just saying. They just lied to me. Yeah. Like, that's not cool. Like, I can eat chicken nuggets daily. And st- I'm going to be using both. <laughs> like, Absolutely. Um, that's just amazing um, how close you are. And the work that, that you're putting in, I've seen on your Instagram, like, nonstop work. And, like, grind doesn't stop. So, I think that was a pretty good... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to actually edit this part out because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end it. Just thank you, though, for doing the interview. Oh, absolutely. Before I end it. Um, so, this has been a great interview with... You, uh, see, yeah, I'm definitely editing this. Um, so, this has been, been a great interview with North Carolina shot putter slash discus thrower and maybe javelin thrower if his coach just lets him do it one time. We don't know, no, but I don't think he's going to because he don't want to be Tommy John. Um, but thank you for doing this interview. It was an amazing interview and hope that I can get you on the podcast one day in the future. And oh, absolutely. can't wait to watch you on in the Olympics one day. Or if you make it to the Olympics, I'm going to try my best to get to go to the Olympics to like get a ticket to see you. <laughs> Dude, there you go. Hey, man, it's been it's been an honor. I really appreciate what you're what you're doing here with um KBM Sports and everything. It's getting stories like mine and everyone else's, and like really helping just just athletes really just grow their platform. And you you really just start helping a lot with the community and everyone else, man. It means a lot. And coming from me, it just it, it means it means a lot to me. So I appreciate you. Of course, it's all about growing and helping people the best to get the, their name out there too. Is we all deserve our shot, shot in the sun, like we all deserve that. Um, make sure you guys subscribe, hit the like button, and go watch some highlights of Daniel throwing because it's awesome. And the balls. Let's before I end it, the balls. How heavy are the balls so people know? Because people are going to be like, oh, it's a small ball. Da, 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 da. How heavy are the balls so, that you're throwing? So the ball I throw is 16 pounds, right? That's the college and professional ball. When you're in high school, you throw 12 pounds. And if you're a girl, you throw 8 pounds. Or the the 4K, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, A little reference point for the shot put. It's the heaviest. It The shot put is the heaviest um, bowling ball you can get at a bowling alley. 16 pounds. There you go, you guys. He's throwing a bowling ball, basically, 70 feet. Yep. I'm just telling you guys, that's just, that's that's crazy. <laughs> wow. So, go watch the highlights, you guys. Make sure you hit that like button. And thank you all for watching. See you next time.